Hello interwebs and welcome to my channel. So some of you may notice a little bit of a difference going on in this video and that's because I'm, I'm not in a building and I'm not in front of a green screen like all this. This is actually here. This is like, look, look, I'm all the way over here. I can actually, I can actually walk into it. Either that or I've gotten really good at green screening, which that's not, that's not what's happened. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually outdoors right now. Um, and that's because, um, as many of you may know, if you've been following my videos, um, and following my live streams and things like that, um, I recently lost my full-time job because of all the craziness going on in the world. And with everyone quarantining and being locked inside, I normally live in Los Angeles. And my parents run a bed and breakfast in New Mexico, which is where I'm at right now, at their bed and breakfast in New Mexico. Um, my, my dad and my stepmom. My mom still lives in New York, where I, uh, where I grew up. Um, but yeah, so I decided, like, hey, I'm not doing anything. I'm kind of bored. Um, so I figured I'd come out and see them and get to be with them, because I don't really get to spend a lot of time with them. And don't worry, I sort of self-quarantined for a little while. There's many places on this property, so we didn't get too close. So we properly socially distanced for a little while, so I didn't get them any sick if I happen to have it, the, 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 the thing that we all, uh, the thing that we shan't speak its name in this video. Um, but anyways, uh, <laughs> what I wanted to focus on for this video was coming here has honestly been really rejuvenating for me. Um, in, a, in a lot of different ways, and I kind of wanted to share with all of you a little bit of the feeling that I've been feeling in these past few days, because it's honestly been, uh, I've been privileged to have this chance to feel a little bit rejuvenated these past couple days and past couple weeks that I've been visiting here, because honestly, I know for a lot of people, myself included before I came here, have been feeling really depressed and down and trapped and, and secluded and isolated because of like I said, everything going on in the world right now. And so I at least want to share with you a positive that has been happening for me, even amongst all the, the terrible stuff. Like I said, I lost my full-time job. I, I um, have been quarantining. I've had to deal with a bunch of other stuff. I've been trying to heal from a surgery in the middle of all of this. So it's been really rough. So when I do find a positive light, I kind of want to share it and, and give it back to all of you so at least maybe someone out there watching this video can and feel a little bit of what I feel and maybe find it for themselves. So like I mentioned earlier in this video, I grew up in New York and my parents were divorced. I, my dad lived near Buffalo and my mom lived near um, Batavia, New York, which is like a small um, city in, in the New York area. And it always made me feel very transient in my life. I mean, there's probably a reason psychologically that I've grown up to be, you know, bisexual, uh, gender fluid, all these things, because I have no fixed identity, and that kind of started with my parents. I always would bounce between their houses. But one thing that kind of gave me a really fixed identity, one a firm thing that I, I really held on to in my youth, especially when I got a little bit older, like around 11, 12, is during the summers, I would go and work at a Boy Scout camp up in the Adirondacks. Um, I would spend two months there every summer working as a counselor. And I did that all the way until I was like 22 or 23. And, you know, I was, to be very honest and blunt, I was kind of a, I was a fat kid. I used to weigh, I think the heaviest I got was 250 pounds. Um, and I was really kind of always overweight when I was younger, mostly because I didn't care about myself because I hadn't come out yet. Um, but that's a separate story. But I was, you know, unathletic. Uh, kind of a homebody. I like to play video games. I like to stay inside. So it was kind of weird that I would spend two months at a Boy Scout camp. And yeah, there were electronics and things, but I was living in a tent for two months every single summer. And the reason that I fell in love with that was two things. One was the community of Boy Scouts that I met there. I mean, I got to actually be amongst my peers who were kind of like weird, quirky, nerdy people anyways. I mean, Boy Scouts always kind of attract those kind of people. But the other thing that I really loved about that time in the Whiskey Camp that pertains to this video is that I got to be in nature. Something that, again, as someone who was a homebody, played video games all the time, I didn't realize how rejuvenating nature could be. How inspiring it could be. One of, one of the things that I loved most working in that camp was at night. Was nighttime like it is right now. And I remember there was this big open field, this big soccer field that they had out at the summer camp. And 
it was the middle of the Adirondacks. There was no lights anywhere other than the small lights that we had around camp. So you looked up and you could see the stars. Like, actually see the stars. Like, all of them. Like, I, the thing you don't realize if you live in the city and you've lived in the city all your life for a long time is that you don't realize that up there in the sky, there's so many colors. There's, you know, we look up, I mean, you can't tell in this video probably, but you look up and it's just a wall of black especially in a city. But when you're out in the Adirondacks, out in the middle of the wilderness, you look up and there's gradients of color, hues of blue and black, and, and, and just a tapestry, the Milky Way above us. And you could see that in the Adirondacks. You could see that at night. And I got to sit and just look up and enjoy and revel in those moments. I've always been someone who's been very scared of death, but, and I've talked about that in other videos, but I've never been scared of insignificance, of feeling small. I'm afraid of, of dying, of non-existing, but I've never been afraid of feeling like there's something bigger than myself. There's bigger things out there. I'm not a religious person by any means. I don't I'm agnostic, really. I, I don't, I'm not saying I'm atheist. I don't not believe that there, you know, I don't say that there isn't a God or anything like that, but I generally don't know. But when I look up at the stars, I feel that insignificance. I feel small. And in a weird way to me, that feels comforting to know that I am part of something much bigger part of something more beautiful, that I am just a speck floating on a, a rock in this great outer space thing. I don't know, I'm not a poet, but I don't know, just that, that feeling of feeling small, of looking up the stars, I don't know, I just, I liked knowing that I was just part of something bigger. That all those specks of light out there were bigger than I was. And I just could sit and appreciate its beauty, the, the diversity of the universe. That's probably the same thing that called me to Star Trek and all the science fiction that I loved, that I just loved feeling like a piece of a greater whole. But when I lived in Los Angeles, the thing I hate about Los Angeles as a city, I, I'm not a big fan of Los Angeles, no, no harm against it if you like Los Angeles, but for me, it feels like a very isolating city. You know, it's such a big city, there's so many people crammed into it, and yet it's hard to get anywhere. There's traffic everywhere, it's always hot, you don't really want to go out, it's difficult to find parking if you do go somewhere. So it's just, it just feels like it's really hard to feel a part of stuff in that city, despite how big it is and how many people are there. You feel isolated, and the stuff going on in the world kind of makes that, you know, makes that compounded even further. And so coming here, I don't know, being back here and being able to look up at the stars again has felt me, I, I felt that rejuvenation again, a feeling like I get to be a part of something bigger than myself. Being with my family has given me that as well. Um, just feeling like a piece of them because I've been, you know, I'm very bad at staying in touch with people. If you get to know anyone in my family there, I say I'm terrible at uh, contacting them and staying in touch, um, which is, you know, my problem that I need to work on. But... I just don't connect as easily with people over electronics, which is ironic considering I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> Being here just reminds me that the world is bigger than we think, and yet smaller. The fact that we're able to connect at all in this big vastness is a beautiful thing. I don't know, it's just a feeling that I just wanted to share. And I guess the point of all this is, if there is a point in this rambling mess of a YouTube video that I'm saying here, is that it's okay to feel small and scared and isolated. But just know that the world is out here. It's still here, and we can still all find connection, and we can still all connect with each other. I don't know. I wish I had like some bigger thesis, but I think that that's all I want to say is that there's still beauty in this world and the beautiful thing in this world is that we are able to find each other in all of this. 
one of the nice things about being a YouTuber and being able to grow all this is that I get to build a community with all of you, and that's been really wonderful to connect to you on live streams and comments and, and Patreon and all that stuff. Um, and I wish I had more time to give to every single one of you. I mean, I'm one person, you're a bunch of people watching these videos, so I can't necessarily connect with each and every one of you all the time. But I do hope, you know, in this weird parasocial relationship thing that we're building, that uh, there's at least some semblance of a human connection that I'm able to share something of myself with you and in a big community way, all of you are able to share bits and pieces of yourself with me. It's not as full or complete as like a in-person relationship, I know, but that's the goal of this channel, to try and humanize these grandiose things. These big science fiction, space science, crazy theory, philosophy concepts and make them feel emotional, make them feel human and core inside of here, in our hearts. <sighs> I don't know. Thank you so much for indulging me in this rant. <laughs> That's all I really had to say. I, I, like I said, not a concise thesis, but just emotions and rambly thoughts. Um, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Jack Kerouac would be very proud of me right now. First thought, best thought, um, as the beats would say. Um, yeah, thank you so much for, for, for joining me here. Um, as always, you know, like, subscribe, all that blah, 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 YouTube stuff, um, Patreon, blah, blah, blah. Um, but really, the important thing is, at the end of the day, I hope that you live long and prosper. Thank you, all of you, for watching, and a special thank you to my patrons, including my amazing commander level and above patrons, Miranda Janelle, Ashley Allen, Eli Bergmas, Sela Roman, Christina Dalliance, Greg Gillum, Stefan Schuhart, Boyd and Mary Beth Earl, Ish the Mad, Randy Thompson, Mouse Pounder, Wellington Marcus, Lorena Mesa, Alexander Miller, Mari Neckar, Gavin Robinson, Michael Beam, Aaron Brown, Munir Amlani, Maggie Evans, Maeve, Wen Dizzle Bizzle, Dante St. James, Wayne Twitchell, Patrick Shannon, Din Hagney, Mystic the Monakeet, Bree Beecher, and Polly Mina. All of your support means so much to me right now, so thank you to all of you. Live long and prosper.